Hey everyone, today I thought I'd talk a little bit about why I don't do debates. Shalom everybody and welcome to Bait to Fila. Ever since I released my first video series almost three years ago entitled The New Testament Unveiled, I've had several people contact me to debate, most of them being teachers in the Hebrew Roots Movement, who were upset by and disagreed with what I presented in that series and so they wanted to debate me. If you haven't seen that video series yet, I will add a link to the whole playlist for the series below in the description. You know, I've always said that I wasn't interested in debating anyone, and what I usually see in response to that on social media is people saying that I'm either afraid to debate or that my arguments aren't strong enough, and honestly, nothing could be further from the truth. You know, people who have been on this channel long enough or have seen a lot of my videos, they know what I do here on YouTube. I take a topic that's either about the traditions of man, or it's about idolatry, or it's about something done in the name of religion, and I hold it up to the word of Elohim to see if it matches. That's what I've done with almost all of my videos. Sometimes the scripture I put up here is in stark contrast to what people believe and they're doing. And a lot of times when I put this up here, I hear from people who are like, wow, I didn't even know it said that. I didn't even know that was a commandment. Well, that's why I do it. That's why I put it up there, because I want to offer the viewer the decision. Okay, this is what you do. This is what Elohim said. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to do what Elohim said, or are you going to still continue to do what you want to do? Because if they're the polar opposites, that's kind of scary. Then why are you doing this? So when people wind up getting upset a lot of times, they aren't actually disagreeing with me, but with the word of Elohim that I'm presenting. I'm just showing people what he said. And when it doesn't line up with what they currently believe, this is when they get upset. You know, just like Christians do when you tell them that they shouldn't be eating pork. Wow, they get all mad then and roll out the whole Jesus made all foods clean stuff, right? As they completely refuse to believe what Elohim said. Well, you know, it's pretty much the same deal with the Messianics. Most of them have no problem from refraining eating pork or other unclean meats because they believe what Elohim said when he said this is what you can eat and this is what you can't eat in the Levitical food laws. Yet the very first commandment in Exodus tells us not to have any other mighty ones besides him and the Messianics, they just completely ignore that. That doesn't work for their beliefs, right? Yet the food commandments, they didn't even make the top 10. This is the first one they ignore. It's, it's amazing. And I see the same type of thing with a lot of other people debating on Facebook. Some people they're debating with refuse to even read in context the verses that they're quoting. It's amazing. A lot of these messianics, they rip these verses out of context. They think that prove a New Testament Messiah from the Tanakh. And they smugly give them to other people, and they look absolutely clueless doing this when other people say, yeah, but have you read it in context to see what it means? And they don't want to do that. There's the verse. That's my proof. Perfect example of this is Isaiah 7.14, the verse they quote that they think prophesies of a future virgin birth. However, to believe that's what it refers to, they must use that verse completely out of context. If you can read all of Isaiah chapter 7, and it's a short chapter, and if you still think it has anything to do with a future Messiah, then that means your beliefs are overriding your power of reasoning. Because you're not able to understand simple English. Period. But hey, Matthew 1.23 refers to it, so people think it must be true. But I guess it's kind of hard for Messianics to admit that the very first fulfillment text in the very first book of the New Testament is bogus. Actually, they're all bogus. But when you hit that very first one and go, well, that's a lie, because there's a footnote to Matthew 1.23 that says, hey, see Isaiah 7.14. And if you have half a brain and you read Isaiah chapter 7, you're like, that's not what it's saying at all. Christians don't do that because they take their pastor's word for it, their church's word for it, and they pass it down generation after generation, and people stay stuck in this rut of idolatry and ignorance. What kind of excuse are they going to have standing before Elohim one day? He said, you could read, couldn't you? 
How many books did you read? You were texting all the time, reading subtitles on movies, and you couldn't even read my word, yet you claim to love me, and you follow me, and you're a Torah keeper, and what's the first commandment in, in, in the Torah? Don't have any other mighty ones besides me. Well, we, we can just stop right there with you. What about this one? John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Where did Elohim ever say that we needed to believe in anyone for eternal life? That would have been all over the Tanakh, yet it's nowhere. Because it's a New Testament lie. How about John 14.6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Did Yeshua? If that would be a fact, don't you think Elohim could have been just a little bit nicer to his people and at least told us something like that? Giving us a little hint. Like, oh yeah, just FYI, uh, you're not going to get to me unless you go through him in the future. So, heads up. That would have been all over the Tanakh. Yet, nowhere. It's not mentioned because it's another lie from the New Testament. So what if you brought up these verses, for example, in a debate? with a messianic and said, okay, show us where Elohim said that in the Tanakh. Well, that would be a real boring debate because whoever was debating that guy, that guy would be sitting there going and flipping through the Tanakh in desperation going, well, that's, that's in here somewhere. It's got to be. And nothing. Because there's nothing like that in there anywhere in the Tanakh. But, oh, man, you'd sure to get a lot of Christian reasoning of, well, it's implied. It's in the spirit of the Tanakh. It's a foreshadowing. So how would you debate someone like that as the actual word of Elohim would have no meaning for them so you'd be trying to use scripture to debate their delusions? No thanks. You know, I've seen this one guy debate quite a bit. He's a Jew for Jesus and with all of his debates, he does one simple trick to waste all of his fellow debaters time. He quotes all the typical proof texted verses from the Tanakh that Christians do that think prophesy of a New Testament Messiah. So whoever he gets to debate him wastes all of his debate time trying to explain to him in the audience what these verses actually mean in context. He does it time after time and he knows well, perfectly well what he's doing. You know, when he smiles a lot and seems like a nice guy and he's really confident, well, you know, Snake oil salesmen were called that for a reason. Because they're selling you something that's garbage, but boy, they're a nice guy. You know, he seems really confident, but he's just as ignorant as the Christians that do the very same thing. Let's look at it like this. Say you have a creationist who is debating an evolutionist. Well, this debate is going to go nowhere. Because the evolutionist usually doesn't believe in God, so he's not going to care whatever kind of proof this creationist comes up with and whatever Bible verses or scripture he shows the evolutionist. It's going to be totally disregarded by the evolutionist, right? And the evolutionist can show the creationist all of their supposed proof, and they can quote Darwin until the cows come home, and it won't mean a rat's patoot to the creationist. Why? Because they both believe different things. They believe totally different sides of the spectrum. And one isn't going to get through the other because one proof from one person, the other one totally disregards and vice versa. So if you went to this debate, all you would wind up seeing is the evolutionist fans rooting for the evolutionists and the creationist supporters rooting for the creationists. And now it's a pick your favorite team sort of scenario and everybody goes home believing what they did in the first place and no minds were opened or changed. It's all just completely pointless. And very similar to what I'd be up against in a debate with a messianic. The evolutionist doesn't believe in the word of God and neither does the messianic. If they did, then they would be neither evolutionist nor messianic. So I don't debate. I make videos. And I always put the verses from the Tanakh up here to show people where I'm quoting so they can follow along in their own scriptures and read for themselves as I promote the word of Elohim, not a religion or a New Testament idol that Elohim never delivered to his people. And that's what I do here on YouTube. I don't give my opinion because my personal opinion doesn't matter. I read the word of Elohim and you know what? The New Testament 
just doesn't match the Tanakh, just as the Tanakh does not prophesy of some kind of New Testament Messiah. And if people want to get mad at me and insult me and call me a false teacher, say they don't agree with me or whatever, that's fine. I really could care less. You know, I didn't write this. I just read it. So I can't take it personally. I really can't. And I don't. But the scary part is, is that these people are doing this online on social media, bearing witness to the entire world that they're disregarding the word of Elohim and all just so they can keep their idol. And these people claim to be Torah keepers. A lot of them do. What if somebody claimed to keep Torah yet worship Buddha or Krishna? Would that be okay with Elohim? Of course not. Same deal with the Messianics that worship their New Testament idol, whether they call him Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach. But they can't see that because they hold their personal opinions and personal beliefs up over the word of Elohim. Same deal for the Christians that eat pork, keep Sunday instead of the Sabbath, and observe all the pagan holidays. They believe what they are doing is acceptable. It's not to Elohim, but they believe it is. And those who call themselves Torah keepers in the Hebrew Roots movement should know better, as most of them came out of the Christian churches. We did. But I guess their plan is just to uh, believe and obey just some of Elohim's word. Is that their deal? Do they figure that they don't need to obey all of it, especially the very first commandment? Deuteronomy chapter 30 is where Elohim tells us that he's going to gather his people, those who keep all of his commands. We know he scattered the children of Israel for being in idolatry, so how can Messianics believe that they will be gathered while they're in idolatry? Elohim told us in Isaiah 43, 11, I, I am Yehoah, and besides me there is no Savior. And in Hosea 13, 4, But I am Yehovah, your Elohim, since the land of Egypt, and an Elohim besides me you shall not know, for there is no Savior besides me. And one more in Isaiah 44, 6 to 8, Thus said Yehovah, sovereign of Israel, and his redeemer, Yehovah of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, besides me there is no Elohim. And who is like me? Let him call and declare it and lay it before me, since I appointed the everlasting people. And the events that are coming, and those that do come, let them declare these to them. Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not since made you hear and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there an Eloa besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. So you either believe Elohim when he said that he is our only Savior, or you don't. I believe him. I believe what he said, and that he meant it. We are to have no other besides him. And he said there is no other besides him. That is not up for debate. Well, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and being a part of Bait to Fella. To give a shout out and a shalom to all my brothers and sisters who are scattered worldwide in the dispersion. Everybody be blessed and have a wonderful day.